we will learn about a different data pre-processing technique called column standardization. We learned about column normalization a while ago in one of the previous videos, right? In column normalization, what did we do? We took values, we took each column and we compressed all of the values between 0 to 1. So as to get rid of scale. So as to get rid of scales of each feature. Okay. And we created our own scale where all the values lie between 0 to 1. That's what column normalization did. All right. So a similar related technique is called column standardization. It's also a data pre-processing technique. So column standardization is more often used than normalization. Uh, it's more often used in practice, okay? Because it has some nice relationship to Gaussian distributions and things like that. But uh, typically people perform column standardization more often than normalization. So we also saw the geometric interpretation of normalization, right? Where all the points are squished into a unit hypercube. We saw this geometric interpretation, right? So we'll see similar geometric interpretation of column standardization. I'll write column standardization in short for column standardization. Okay. So let's see what column standardization is. It's a very, very simple idea. So let's assume I have it. I have my data matrix. Okay. With feature one, feature two, so on and so forth, feature J, so on and so forth, feature D, one, two, so on, ith point, so on and so forth, nth point. This is n cross D. Okay. Where the ith uh, so this is your xi transpose. This is your data vector. Now here also, just like in uh, column normalization, I take a column vector. Of course, just like in column normalization, even column standardization, we standardize each column. We standardize every column. Let's see how to standardize one column. An, right? So here, a1, a2, a3, so on, so forth, an are n values are n values of feature j of course there will be other columns with other types so i'm just taking i'm just showing you how to do column normalization for one column the same thing needs to be done for other columns also so in column standardization what i do is this this is my raw data right it could be in any scale it could be kilograms inches i don't care okay i'll convert this into into a1 dash, a2 dash, a3 dash, so on, ai dash, so on, so forth, an dash. Just like in normalization, okay? In normalization, all values, as I showed you earlier, all values fell in the unit hypercube or everything, for each column, all the values slide between zero to one. Here, there's a subtle difference. Here, in the transform data, in the transform data, so this is called the transform data or standardized data. I'll ensure that the mean of the mean of my standardized data, mean of ai dash for all the values of i to n is zero and the standard deviation of ai dash equals to one. Okay, I so what column standardization does exactly is it converts your data points, it converts your a1, a2, an into a1 dash, a2 dash, a3 dash such that the mean of these points could be anything, right? The standard deviation of these points, the sample standard deviation, the sample mean could be anything. But I want to convert this data in such a way that the mean of the converted or the transformed data is zero and standard deviation equals to one. Okay, this is not boxing all the, so here, what did we do here? We converted, so in, in data normalization, right? So what did we do in column normalization? In column normalization, we ensured that all your AI dash light in the interval zero to one. That's what column normalization here. Standardization is we're converting into a form such that a dash is, the mean of a dash is zero and standard deviation equals to one. Why is that important? We'll see, trust me, it's very, very useful, very, very important. But this is one form of standardization, one form of transforming or getting rid of scale, right? Here I'm saying, okay, all values should lie between zero and one. Here I'm saying, instead of all values lying between zero and one, I want the mean to be zero, I want the standard deviation to be one. Okay, I'm not saying, so here, remember, I'm not assuming anything about the distribution of A1, A2, so on, so forth, AI, so forth, so on. This can come from any distribution, not necessarily Gaussian. This can come from any distribution. I don't care. But through column standardization, 
I'm converting them into A1 dash, A2 dash, so on so forth, AI dash, so on so forth, A and dash, okay, such that their mean is zero and their variance and so a standard deviation equals to one. Let's see how to do it. That's a very, very simple way of doing it. Let's define A bar as the mean of my AIs. Okay, let's put it this way. Okay, it's the mean of all AIs. It's the mean of these, not AI bars. Okay, or AI dashes, sorry. So the mean of these AIs, the mean of these AIs, let's call it A bar. Let's call S as the standard deviation of my AIs. So this is, these are sample mean. This is sample mean, not population mean. From probability class, you'll, you'll, I hope you remember what sample, what's the difference between sample and population. Okay, this is sample standard deviation. Okay, I can easily compute, right? Given a bunch of vectors or given a bunch of scalars in this case, sorry, I can compute the mean very easily. I can also compute the standard deviation using simple formulae that we learned in exploratory data analysis, right? So now what I'll do here is my formula to compute AI dash, which is this, is I'll take each AI, subtract A bar and divided by standard deviation. Okay, so this will guarantee, I, I, I'll not prove it here. Uh, for those of you who are interested, you could take it as an exercise. You could take it as an exercise that the mean of AI dashes equals to zero and the standard deviation of AI dash equals to one. If I, if I transfer, if I construct my AI dash using this formula, okay, you can actually very easily prove with simple algebra, you can prove that the mean of these values, mean of my AI dashes is zero and standard deviation equals to one. This might look very similar to something else that you have seen when we learned probability. So let me rewrite the formula here. This is my formula, right? If you recall, when we learned about standard normal variate called Z or Z, okay, we realized that Z is nothing but X minus mu by sigma, where we said if X is normally distributed with mu and sigma, and if I construct my Z like this, then my Z will be normally distributed with a mean of one and standard deviation, sorry, mean of zero and standard deviation of one, right? If you recall, these two look very, very similar. This formula looks very similar to this formula. But remember, your AIs could come from any distribution. I'm just, can come from any distribution. It doesn't matter. Okay. But this is, so it's called standardization because you're, conver you're applying the idea from standard normal variate here to transform your data such that AI dash has a mean of zero. AI dashes have a mean of zero and standard deviation of one. Here, by applying this transformation, I'm creating a new random variable here, which has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, right? Very similar, it looks exactly similar. That's why it's called standardization. And this is a standard normal variable. That's why it's called standardization. Now you might ask, why is this useful geometrically? Let's understand what does this mean geometrically, okay? So let, let's see what it is geometrically, okay? Imagine if I have two features, heights and weights, these are my heights, these are my weights. In, a, in some scale, I don't care what the scale is, okay? So let's assume these are some, some students or people's heights and weights, okay? So where does the mean, mean of these data point lie? Mean lies here, right? Mean lies here, right? And the spread of data, what is what is standard deviation or what is variance? So if I project each of these points onto your height axis, I'll get points like this. Okay, for each point, I can I can I can project it and get a point here. So if I keep projecting all my points here, okay, the mean, the mean here, let me change the color here. This will be your mean point corresponding exactly to this, right? And this is your mean weight. This is your mean height and this is your mean weight, right? So here for, for your heights, the mean is here and there is some variance here. Variance measures the spread, 
right? Variance measures the spread. The more the spread, the more the variance. I'm not saying variance is this width. Okay, the more variance, I cannot I cannot show it geom uh, I cannot show it geometrically because the formula is slightly more tricky, right? So variance measures how spread your data is. Similarly, if I project all these points, let's assume all these points fall in this range. Okay, so your mean vector could lie here, right? And your spread will, the more spread, the higher the variance or standard deviation, because standard deviation is nothing but square root of variance, right? Now, by transforming this, by transforming this using column standardization, what do we get? Okay, this is interesting. I get a new data set. Let's call this F1 dash or height dash. This is my F2 dash and height dash, sorry, weight dash. Now, I told you that through column standardization, I'm going to get a mean of mean of zero, which means this mean point will now move to zero comma zero. So my data, my new data will look like this. Let me draw it for you. My new data will look like this. For my new data, my mean, my mean of my data, my mean vector will lie at 0, 0, since it's two-dimensional. If it's high-dimensional, it'll, it'll lie at origin. Basically, this is origin, right? So I have moved, I have transformed my space. Okay, what I've done, I've basically taken these points. I have moved all these points such that the mean moves to 0. Okay, and I've also ensured that I also squish these points. I also squish these points. I also squish these points. So first thing I did was I moved my mean to, to center and I'm squishing these points such that the variance that I get now. So this is the spread that I get on X axis right now. And this is the spread that I get on Y axis, isn't it? I'm squishing these points such that the variance the standard deviation on on any axis right is one so literally what i am doing i am basically first step is i am moving the mean vector i am moving the mean vector to origin okay and now second is i am either squishing or expanding i might also expand right if let's say my variance here is let's say 0.5, uh, let's say my standard deviation, my standard deviation, my sample standard deviation is let's say 0.5, then I need to expand these points, right? Because what is the guarantee here? The guarantee in my transformed space is that the standard deviation is one on any axis. So if my standard deviation here is less than one, I'm going to expand these points. I'm going to pull these points, stretch these points away. If my standard deviation here, let's say is five, then I'm going to push, I'm going to compress these points. I'm going to squish these points such that the standard deviation. So I'm going to squish or expand such that the standard deviation for any feature is one. This is the essence of your column standardization geometrically. Okay. Geometrically, I'm moving, I'll, I'll repeat it just, just for clarity. I'm moving the mean vector to origin, okay? And I might as well squish the points or expand the points. I'll squish it if the way, if the standard deviation is less than one. Sorry, I'll squish it if the standard deviation is greater than one. I'll expand it if the standard deviation is less than one. So I have to make the standard deviation equals to one on every axis, on your F1 dash axis or F2 dash axis. Now this is called, this, people also call it as uh, mean centering. So people also center it and then scale it. So your, your column standardization is, is often called as mean centering because you're centering the mean at origin followed by, followed by scaling. You're scaling it such that mean centering basically is nothing but moving the mean vector to origin. Scaling basically means you're ensuring that standard deviation on every axis is equal to one standard deviation for all features equals to one we'll see why this is useful we'll see why data uh, why column standardization is very very useful when we learn pca which is which is the next 
important topic at our uh, that we'll learn in 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 dimensional detection. 